topic uh, that we're discussing is a very sensitive topic indeed around the world and uh, it is Islamist terrorism, Wahhabism and its roots. We are honored with the presence of the CEO of Messiah Foundation International, His Holiness Yunus Al Goha, who is known as the Ambassador for Peace and a man of valor as well. His services are highly effective in de-radicalization and promoting love and peace in the world. Today, we will discuss with His Holiness our very useful, needful aspects of our global society. Welcome, Your Holiness. Thank you very much. And uh, the, fir the first question we have, it's, it's a very pertinent question because uh, we have seen uh, in recent years a rise in Islamist terrorism. Why do you think Islamist terrorism has become such a global issue? Islam is a peaceful religion and Muslims throughout the history have been peaceful, especially the Sufi Muslims. What we see in form of Islamism Wahhabism is a parallel ideology to the religion of Islam and is based on lack of spiritual knowledge and misinterpretation of the Holy Quran and uh, misconceptions and things which were allowed for a certain period of time those things have been extended and have been given rise as a result of which Islamism is spreading throughout the world and it is supported by oil money and um, world politics. This is why we have rise of Islamism in the world today. Also, Your Holiness, moderate Muslims uh, tend to say that ISIS uh, and other terrorist organizations have nothing to do with Islam. But we find that most terrorists call themselves Muslims. Does this mean that Islam promotes terrorism? No, Islam does not promote terrorism, but we need to understand that there are so many denom different denominations in Islam, so many different sects, and uh, they differ so much among each other that they cannot coexist in one particular society, as a result of which intolerance and hatred has given rise to um, uh, fanaticism and extremism, and uh, even Muslims are killing Muslims simply because one group of Muslim does not agree to the philosophies of another group. Uh, can you explain why uh, Wahhabism, uh, what Wahhabism is and how it is different from the Islam practiced by mainstream moderate Muslims? Wahhabism is uh, an ideology of some people who lacked spiritual knowledge. I understand every single prophet and every messenger was given two types of knowledge by God, knowledge of the body and knowledge of the soul. They thought the knowledge given by the Prophet ended when Prophet departed from this world. But they forgot the Prophet's soul is still alive and we can still communicate with the soul of the Prophet. But they don't have this knowledge. This is why they are struggling with uh, the right interpretation of the faith of Islam. Uh, Your Holiness, of course, uh, what are the origins of Wahhabism and how, back, how far back in history uh, did it first start to become popular? Wahhabism, um, the, the concept that they follow uh, was rejuvenated by a man called Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab who was born in central province of Saudi Arabia, Najd. But this philosophy existed well before his birth and it was conceived by Ibn Taymiyyah who is a famous um, Islamic scholar and um, um, they, he believed that uh, giving a lot of respect to Prophet Muhammad and giving respect to uh, those Muslims who practice Sufism is, uh, is a form of um, uh, heretics and it is uh, uh, not part of Islam. So they concluded that whatever teaching came from the Prophet at the time of Prophet, we should only follow that one. And all these Sufis who have uh, introduced uh, philosophies of tolerance and love and peace, this should not be declared as part of Islam. So extremism uh, rose from this kind of uh, concept and this was presented by Ibn Taymiyyah. And the Muslims of that time, the era, did not accept it. 
and they kicked him out from the town. And it was always there, this concept, the extreme concept, the fanatic concept, always is said there, until this man Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab Najdi was born. And then he propagated and uh, he gathered some people around him. And um, they have taken it to um, a world level task that all Muslims need to be purified and the way of purification is to stop practicing Sufism and um, a conventional uh, form of Islam and all should adhere to Wahhabi school of thought which they think was the purest form of Islam. So uh, this uh, uh, ideology of Wahhabism was well supported uh, by uh, countries in Middle East who have oil money and with the help of oil money uh, this ideology uh, traveled uh, all corners of the globe uh, building mosques and uh, giving away literature free and uh, the politic uh, gains and uh, relationship with other countries helped uh, spread this ideology of uh, hatred and death. Now your whole yourself uh, this comes from me because um, uh, all my friends uh, think I'm, I'm, I'm personally I'm Christian and all my friends think why why do they do it why do, why why are they you know uh, so extreme why do they uh, go around uh, uh, killing I'm talking about ISIS why do they go around you know killing and he, uh, as you mentioned yourself uh, they kill uh, Muslims as well fellow Muslims uh, so I mean other other you know, uh, religions are kind of uh, worried I mean what why do they do it. Because they do not follow true Islam. I mean, uh, is, is the Quran uh, different from the Bible or? No, Quran, Bible, Torah, Talmud, all come from the same God. And the, the principle, the basic principles of all these books are the same. The source is the same. The prophets are different. The source is the same. Quran talks about love. Quran talks about equality. Bible talks about love, although Bible talks more about God's love than Quran does. However, the basic principle of both or three books is the same. Because Islam, Christianity, Judaism, all three are monotheist religion. And the father of these three, three religions is Abraham, who is the father of all prophets. And specifically, categorically speaking now, Quran said killing one human being is equal to killing the entire humanity. Obviously, if somebody claims to be a Muslim and doing the opposite of what Quran and Islam teaches, he should not be considered as a true Muslim. So, if somebody is carrying out carnage, massacre, slaughter of human beings, we can understand that person is not following the true path of Islam. Because Islam's teachings are explicit in Quran, which says you cannot kill anybody. So, Your Holiness, uh, your... Um when you uh, mention the fact that uh, the Quran says that you can't kill anybody, True. but uh, you know, uh, in Western countries, in other countries, uh, they believe. Uh, lots of people believe that uh, the Quran says uh, that the Quran says otherwise, and that's why these guys, the like organizations like ISIS, uh, they do what they do. You see, the problem is the Quran is in Arabic, and uh, uh, most most Muslims don't speak Arabic, so they depend on the translation, right? Now, when the Muslims themselves do not find it easy to understand Quran, you ask yourself, how can non-Muslims understand Quran easily? But I can tell you for sure that there is no such verse in Quran which tells Muslims to go and kill those who don't follow Islam. That is absolutely crap and rubbish if somebody says Quran teaches violence. Quran doesn't teach violence. Uh, isn't that what... Uh ISIS, or ISIS as we call it in short, isn't that what they're trying to promote uh, right now? That the Quran, uh, they, because they, they say it's all done in the name of God, the Al Almighty. I can give you an example. Yeah, do not be offended. I'm just giving you an example. For example, you are alone in your bedroom with your wife. And you say, take off your clothes. Take off your underwear. Take off your bra. And come sit on me. Let's have sex, okay? Now, this talk should be confined to the bedroom and bed. 
if you keep saying this stuff outside the bedroom in front of people, that is really, really bad. So those ayah that talk about killing in Quran were revealed in the battlefield where Prophet Muhammad was there against the enemies of Islam. Those, those verses of Quran were revealed in the battlefield and Quran said, those who are after you, go and kill them. But that was confined to the battlefield, not outside the battlefield. This is the difference. And when people say, oh, Quran does promote violence, Quran does ask Muslims to kill others. Yeah, Quran does it. But that was for a specific period of time and it was revealed in the battlefield. Like when you're in your bedroom, you can ask your wife to take off her clothes, but no outside. So this was confined to a very uh, specific uh, statement that uh, Prophet Muhammad said. And it's not, it's not like, you know, anybody can practice this by uh, killing. It was for there and then in the battlefield. So this is what they have uh, misconstrued as. Now, let me tell you one more example. If it was meant to kill all those people who do not practice Islam, then why people go and preach Islam? Why don't you just simply kill them? Right? It was for the battlefield, not outside the battlefield. What can Muslims do to curb the spread of Wahhabism? Well, they should know Quran well. They should have the right interpretation of the Quran. There have been Sufi scholars who interpreted the Quran. And from this Quran, they took out the message of love. And they spread love and peace. And those Sufi scholars met Christians, Hindus, Sikhs. And they gave love to everybody. They did not hate anybody. And they took this message from the Quran. And these people are taking what kind of weird message from Quran, which consists of hatred and killing. This is their own conception. This is their own perception and own dreams of becoming world leader, you know, by hook or crook. Uh, what can our uh, Sri Lanka leaders in uh, Sri Lanka, of course, the uh, president uh, uh, right now, uh, can do to make uh, Sri Lanka safe from Islamist terrorists as such? It's a very sensitive issue. And uh, the Sri Lankan government should monitor um, people who follow the ideology of hatred and intolerance. And they should also invite uh, Islamic scholars who... Uh, 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 talk about Sufi Islam, the Islam that promotes love and peace, the, the, the spiritual uh, dimension of Islam, such scholars should be promoted and they should, they should be allowed to give the true interpretation of the Quran to the Muslim youth. So when the wrong interpretation is hammered into the brains of the youth, at the same time right interpretation of the Quran should also be given to them. This war is not going to be fought with weapons. This war can only be won with the weapon of knowledge. And that knowledge is the right interpretation. Your Holiness, I wanted to ask you, uh, if you can explain what exactly the Messiah Foundation is. Messiah Foundation International is a spiritual organization. We do not represent any particular religion. And we understand Spirituality has been part of every religion. When spirituality was missed out from those religions, people started to become extremist and fanatic. Because spirituality is the only knowledge which can connect people to God. Spirituality awakens the heart. Spirituality awakens the soul. And when your spirit, your soul is awakened, you begin to have the attributes of God in you. If your soul is dormant if your soul is in sleeping mode only your body is acting you are not benefiting from the ethereal attributes divine attributes godly attributes of the soul you have deprived yourself from the most important core dimension of your life now, uh, we all know that uh, you do have unique methods to stop radicalization. Uh, can you talk us through the work uh, that you and the Messiah Foundation in class will do to stop radicalization? Well, we promote uh, a spiritual practice and spiritual knowledge. And the method is that we uh, spiritually transmit divine energy into the hearts of all people from all religions. And what happens is when God's name is inserted 
implanted in the beating system of the heart, it starts to generate divine energy, divine light. And that divine light and divine energy has the attributes of compassion, the divine attributes, the attributes of love, the attributes of tolerance. And when the heart and the soul become powerful, these elements of life, these elements of divinity within you will stop you from hating people, from killing people, because everything happens inside you, in your brain. If your brain is controlled by a devil, you will do evil things. And if your brain and your heart is controlled by divine, you will love everybody. We help people to surrender their heart to divinity. And when the heart embraces divinity, it begins to love everybody because God is love and love is God. One who doesn't understand love, he cannot understand God. Same message comes from the Bible and the same message comes from Islam, the Quran. The only difference between Christianity, Islam and Judaism is their prophets. Otherwise, the knowledge is the same and principles of all these religions is the same. Quran says Allah is the light of the heaven and earth and Bible says the same thing father is the light of heaven and earth Prophet Muhammad said I am the way to God Jesus said I am the way to God Prophet Muhammad said I am the way to God and Jesus said I am the way to God now there are two different statements but what Jesus said to Christians is for Christians that for Christians Jesus is the way to God and when Prophet Muhammad said I am way to God it is for Muslims right so nothing is wrong with Islam or Judaism or Christianity or Hinduism what is wrong is with people their hearts are corrupt their but hearts need to adopt the the attributes of compassion and love and they can the hearts and the soul cannot adopt anything until they are awakened until they are spiritualized until they become the recipient of a spiritual light and this is what we do we initiate people into spirituality and by virtue of spirituality we promote divine energies into their souls and spirits also your holiness uh, i've got to ask you do you have any advice for the average person on how they can protect themselves and uh, their communities uh, from islamist uh, terrorism well everybody has to be well aware of what is going around him they should be able to know what is right and what is wrong and when you know what is right and what is wrong then it's up to you to protect yourself or get carried away become lazy and you feel vulnerable and you fall to the prey of the evil if you know your enemy is standing there and is holding a weapon you will definitely want to protect yourself even if you don't have any weapon you will run away and hide yourself somewhere but if you cannot see your enemy right the problem the problem right now is that terrorism is coming from Islam but at the same time we have good Muslims so what we do now who do we trust to be a true Muslim should we speak against Islam or should we not speak against Islam but when terrorism strikes and people get killed we have to manifest our anger and our pain and when we do that people think we're discriminating against Muslims this is where we need to draw a line between Islam itself and those who perpetrate and who are making a mockery out of the peaceful divine religion of Islam Islam is not bad but bad people are using name of Islam and doing bad stuff we need to be able to differentiate between those so-called Islamists and true Muslims your holiness also um, uh, last but not uh, least you have written and spoken on this subject at length can you let our viewers know where they learn more about your views and advice on Wahhabism uh, we have different websites uh, www gohrshahi.us and then I have uh, a personal website as well yunusalgohar.com y-o-u-n-u-s 
a l g o h a r dot com. Uh, Your Holiness, uh, there are two uh, numbers here mentioned. If you could uh, just mention the numbers so that you know, uh, these are uh, I believe these are Sri Lankan numbers. Uh, if you can just mention the numbers so that uh, you know, if anybody likes to learn more about it, they can uh, speak to you directly. Can this? Can yeah. can anybody speak to you directly? Yes, they can speak to me directly. They can send me email. Okay. They can send me messages on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, Your Holiness, as I mentioned when we uh, started off the uh, interview. Uh, I mentioned that this was a very sensitive subject and everybody who's anybody who's a non-Muslim is talking about this right now. Right. I understand that. So, uh, I, I also uh, spoke to um, uh, representatives from uh, your organization. I just I had the pleasure of meeting them. And, uh, you know, they put me straight on a couple of things that uh, I had, you know, in a dark place in my mind. I was thinking, as I, as I mentioned to you earlier, I was thinking, why do they do it? Okay, why would they do it? What's the reason? Uh, mm -hmm. Isn't you know? But I have, I've got Muslim friends. I mean, they're peaceful as ever. Yeah, I mentioned it. I've got Muslim friends, my classmates, you know, yep. the guys I went to college with. They are very peaceful guys. I mean, come to think of it, none of them were violent. Because they may be following the right interpretation of the Quran. It's been a pleasure, of course. Uh, we've had with us. Uh, his Holiness uh, Yunus Al Goha, and uh, certainly uh, Your Holiness, it's 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 a pleasure having you with us, Thank and you very, uh, much. Uh, very especially on Sea the TV, uh, letting our viewers know exactly uh, what is what and how to differentiate. That's 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 what's been worrying. Uh, mostly everybody. So thank you for joining us. It's, it's certainly been a pleasure having you with us. Thank you so much. 